I hate Christmas music. <laughs> I hate the sound of children singing even more, but I really hate Christmas music. <laughs> <laughs> not a good confession to make. <laughs> Statistically speaking, the rate of depression goes up astronomically during the holiday season, and I think that we can all blame Christmas music. <laughs> It's forced upon us whether we're in the grocery store, the car, or flipping through channels on television. And almost every single Christmas song is about people being alone, or dead grandparents, or some maniacal old man in a red suit who stalks and preys upon small children. <laughs> and Gene Autry is public enemy number one. <laughs> His Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is nothing more than a horrifying little ditty about a gang of reindeer who bully someone just because they are different. <laughs> because he has a red nose. They would laugh and call him names and wouldn't let them join in any of their little reindeer games until Santa was all, hey, I have a job for you. And then what happened? Then all the reindeer loved him. Like, that was his big, it gets better moment. <laughs> Frosty the Snowman is a song about a ball of ice with two eyes made out of coal, traditionally a gift given to bad children, that becomes possessed when it acquires a hat and pipe. He taunts children before he melts, and he says, Don't you cry, I'll be back again someday. <laughs> I prefer to think of this as a song about alienation and rejection rather than idle threats of revenge. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town. This song scared the crap out of me as a child. There's not a single line in the song that's cute. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Here, Audrey portrays Santa Claus as a sociopathic stalker <laughs> who apparently will end your life if you're naughty. <laughs> now go back, when you get home tonight, go back and look at photos of yourself as a child when you were, had to go to the mall and, and sit in his lap. Now you remember why. You blocked it. Collectively, we all have mall Santa Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> and if Santa Claus is coming to town, uh, if, if that was the warning shot, the next song on the radio is usually, Here Comes Santa Claus, telling you, too late, here he comes, you can't run, you can't hide. Instead, the lyrics inform children to jump in bed and cover their head. <laughs> There are songs about children walking in on their parents' infidelity, like I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> Nothing cute about that. It's basically a song about a home wrecker. And it wouldn't be so cute if it was I Saw Daddy Kissing Santa Claus. <laughs> then there's songs like Wham's Last Christmas, in which George Michael gave his heart to whom I can only imagine was Andrew Ridgely. And what did Andy do? The very next day, he gave it away. Nice. There's a word for that, but I can't use it in church. <laughs> so George continues, this year to save me from tears, I'll give it to someone special. Very shortly thereafter, he met someone in, uh, in the park in Beverly Hills. <laughs> Winter Wonderland has been recorded by over 150 recording artists and stars, and I've never understood why the couple building the snowman pretend that he's a preacher who says, are you married? That's this talking snowman's first question. Not a Merry Christmas, he says, are you married? And you have to admit it's a little creepy when little children sing it, and they respond, no, man, but you can do the job when you're in town. <laughs> and I'm not even going to get into the passive-aggressive songs to slit your wrist by, like, I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams, or I'll have a blue Christmas without you, or please come home for Christmas. Those are all pretty self-explanatory. They suck. Cry me a river. <laughs> like Joni Mitchell's, I uh, wish I had a river I could skate away on, where she sings about cutting down trees, a lot of trees, and how someone loved her, but she didn't love him, so what does she want to do? She wants to skate away. That's nice. <laughs> uh, it's the most wonderful time of the year has a single lyric that has stumped me in all of my years. See if you know what I'm talking about. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. They'll be scary ghosts. <laughs> Who tells ghost stories at Christmas time? I write horror movies, and I've never once said, you know what, this office party could really use a ghost. <laughs> Let's all gather down by the fireplace, and let me tell you about the headless elf who wanders the super Walmart looking for children's souls. Never have. 
<laughs> but it is the subject of my upcoming movie, Stumpy the Elf and the Massacre on Alpha. <laughs> Twelve days of Christmas sounds like a good idea when you first look at the list of presents, uh, until you start to look at the list of presents that this idiot gave his true love. Partridge in a pear tree? Cute. Two turtle doves? Okay. They don't live very long. Three French hens? And there's dinner for Christmas Eve. <laughs> Eight maids in milking. Nine ladies waiting. It's pretty much the worst drinking song of all time. <laughs> And if you actually listen to the lyrics of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, you realize that there's nothing depressing about this song at all. It's the slow, melodic, depressing pace of the song that makes you want to stick your head in an oven full of gingerbread men. <laughs> it's the old yeller of Christmas songs. <laughs> Close runners up are White Christmas and Silver Bells. <laughs> Do They Know It's Christmas was written about famine relief. I can't decide if it's more insulting to the people of Ethiopia or the people listening to the song. Exhausted from all your shopping and parties? There are people who don't even know it's Christmas and don't have food to eat. Happy, happy holidays, you bourgeois pig. <laughs> and dare we not forget the pinnacle of awful Christmas songs, the new song classic, The Christmas Shoes. It's a song about a boy who just wants to buy his dying mother a pair of shoes. Or as Lifetime calls it, Sunday night. <laughs> Which brings me to Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. <laughs> Highly unlikely. The lyrics tell us Gram Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer walking home from our place Christmas Eve. First off, everyone knows that Santa parks his sleigh on the roof. So, uh, so he was nowhere near the street. <laughs> Secondly, who lets their grandma walk home? <laughs> the lyrics tell us she had had too much eggnog and they begged her not to go, but she left her medication home, so she stumbled out into the snow. No old woman should be walking out in the snow alone, especially if she's drunk. So obviously, Grandpa would be distraught, right? Catatonic that his wife of many years has been mowed down by a reindeer. No. The next day, Grandpa's in the living room watching football, drinking beer, and playing cards with Cousin Belle, because that's normal. <laughs> I don't claim to be a crime scene expert, but I'm guessing that if the police checked Grandpa's garage, they're going to find little grandma pieces in the grill of Grandpa's cabin. <laughs> it's like the song was written by the notorious B.I.G. <laughs> Imagine that interrogation. It was a reindeer. Yeah. She was just walking home and... <laughs> I'm not a big Santa Claus fan, but clearly he was framed for murder. Uh, and I, I mean, not all Christmas music is bad. There are some songs that come on the radio that are fun and happy, upbeat, like Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, Jingle Bell Rock, All I Want From Christmas Is You, and of course the Chipmunk song. <laughs> but Away in a Manger, Oh Holy Night, Park the Herald Angels Sing, Oh Come All You Faithful, that's my flavor. They, they, they never talk about missing people or rushing out to buy Christmas presents. There's no fear of some a psychotic snowman nipping your nose off or a fat guy breaking into your house in the middle of the night or some rat who claims that all he wants for Christmas is his two front teeth. <laughs> I want my Christmas music to be about Jesus and his birthday. I imagine that if Mary were to visit Hollywood Highland today and she heard people singing carols, she'd be all, I was a virgin who went into labor during tax season and gave birth to a messiah in a cold barn without lights, electricity, heat, or a doctor and had to put my baby in a food trough. You're sad because your loved one isn't going to be near you? Ooh, my son was crucified on a cross for your sins. Man up, Elvis. Grow a set. 